here we are at Taulit Restaurant in Beirut where I'm meeting Kamal Muzawwar. Having explored early on Lebanon's rural areas and discovered the crop that farmers harvest, Muzawak felt a desire to bring people what he felt they were lacking, farm fresh organic produce from all over the country. In 2004, he created the first farmer's market, which was eventually followed by a farmer's kitchen known as Taulit, which literally means tables, and where every day features a menu from a different part of the country. He now presides over many taulets, culinary guest houses, and even created programs that empower small-scale farmers, producers, and underprivileged communities by teaching them cuisine skills that lead to economic independence. So it was only natural that we meet him in what may be considered his second home, surrounded by hungry foreigners and city dwellers, to speak about his food activism. There is this farmer's market, which before you even brought up the notion, really just existed abroad, not really here. Not at all. And you said it's because we need to go back to the roots of the land. I'm just a son of farmers and I know what it is to produce something, to plant something. And I know that food doesn't come in a box on a supermarket shelf. So all of these ideas are important. When you understand that finally you're sustaining your life from what you're eating. And what you're eating comes from somewhere, whether it's a piece of meat or a lettuce, both of them come from something called the land. And if you're gonna still, you know, if you're not gonna nurture this land to give you more and better, you're just gonna kill it. So it's just about that. There are some unhealthy options out there. So how do we bring it back? To the land. By eating the simplest possible, it's very, very easy. You don't need to make a revolution. Just say no to what's not respectful to me as a human, to my body as a human, to the environment, to the animals we're raising. Just like say no, thank you, and look at something else that is a little bit more fair and just to me, to my body, to my system, to the earth, and to the animals and the vegetables we're raising. But it's difficult to do that, because some people may not have access to that. Well, you, you always have an access to a tomato, a cucumber, and a piece of lettuce, and you can yes. live on that. So it's not, it's not about the best option. Mm -hmm. There's nothing called the best option. Mm -hmm. There's always, you know, the best possible. The best possible the option. The best possible. And there's not, you know, one way. There's always the best possible way for here and now. You created the farmer's market known as Sou at Yes. And you've also embarked upon starting food education programs. Women mean a lot to you in that sector. Women mean a lot when we're talking about cuisine. Yes, yes, you know, yes, yes. Men are in the fields, mainly. They are planting, they are producing. Women cooking, Women is what I mean. are more, you know, cooking at home. So it is the domestic dimension of food, which is a dimension that we completely forgot. When we think about food today, we mainly talk about professional chefs who are like doing like a competition in restaurants, or we think about agro-industry. Like Top Chef. Absolutely. Do you so, watch those? No, I don't have TV, I don't watch TV. Kamal, yes? this, this healthy life, there's not It's not questions. a healthy life, it's just the choices that I make. If I don't want to clutter my tummy, I first of all, I don't want to clutter my senses, my ears, my nose, and mainly my eyes and my mind. You're a perfectionist, Kamal. I'm not a perfectionist. I think you I'm are. I'm just trying to unclutter my life. But striving, want... striving for the healthiest possible way, striving for the best. It's not about the healthiest way. It is about the best I can take in for me to able to perform the best. I'm performing. Huh? Each one of us has a role and we're performing this role. Mm -hmm. For me to be able to do the best, you know, I need to feed myself on all levels. I'm not talking about only about food. It's the best possible way. If I have a diesel car and I put, you know, like the best gasoil or what you call benzene, you know, gas in yes, it. Yes, yes. It's not gonna function. It's a diesel car. Fuel, of course. You know, so so it's always how can I fuel and feed myself the best for me to perform the best. You've also launched a program where, whereby Syrian and Palestinian refugee women can come and cook and share their meal and be active in society and not excluded, especially with everything that's going on politically in the region. So tell me a little bit about that. It's very easy to exclude others, you know. It's very easy to put a label called the other, whether you're from a different religion, a different political background, different skin color, you know. Why am I different from you if I have just a different skin color? Is my skin color or my political belief or my religious belief make who I am? 
Am I so shallow? Am I just like a skin pigment, you know? Or there is something beyond that? If there is something beyond that, what is this common ground that is beyond all of us? And this is how the adventure of Sukhut Tayyip started. We're not about a market to sell vegetables and fruits. We're not here in Tawli about a restaurant to feed people. Mm -hmm. I don't care about all of this. These are just ways to find common grounds for people who were different and killing each other because of their differences. So mm -hmm. this is how the farmer's market came and started in 2004. Then in 2007, it was like, why do I have only to move this move from rural to urban? Why don't I go back to the rural areas of production and from time to time go discover this farmer, he or she, in her own environment and you know, discover what they have as traditions and wealth in this region. Yes, it seems to be your motto, well, you know, to bring people together, to be more inclusive, but also another one of yours is to make everybody feel like this is a home. Because when you're home, what happens? It's a space of trust. And when it's a space of trust, what do you do? You take off your armor, right? And you start being closer to the other. And when you start being closer to the other, maybe by then we can start, you know, instead of having the energy of one, we have the energy of two, and we can do more and better. What do you think makes Lebanese food stand out? It's simple, it's uh, very flavorful, very colorful, just as uh, land and the people. Look how we speak. Hi, kifak, sava. Yeah. So it's like all of these yeah, different things together. Yeah, we've never mentioned this. It's three languages in yes. one. In my opinion, this is our real identity. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an identity of diversity. We're not one. It's all of us together who makes this identity that I am today. Speaking of food, you're also releasing a new book called Manger Libanais. Yes. Now, how is this different than... You've released a few books before. This yes. is your fourth, is it? It's my fourth. It's a book in French mm -hmm. with a very nice editor, Marabou. And it's a road trip. We're going out of Beirut and we're going all around the country to the countryside in the south to Shouf, to the Bekaa, like we're doing a loop all over Lebanon, every time stopping at one of our different cooks, meeting her, having a portrait of her, then few of her recipes, and discovering a little bit the, the area. These women, they say you've changed their lives, you've given them they something. They have changed their lives themselves. I cannot, I cannot change mine. How can I change their lives? We are all catalysts for each other, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's about complementarity. I was reading this interesting thing that you said, somebody asking you, you know, what would you change? And you said, I would like to change the habits in my life. And then you said, be less angry. Do you consider yourself? I can get angry, yes. Because this kind of job and business also I don't require... have a job, I don't have a business. Uh, because we, because I don't. Think, you don't like labels at all. I don't like labels, but I don't have a job. I don't have a business. I don't. This is my life. Angry meaning what? This is my what life. What makes you angry? Because I think we are in a country that is not very easy sometimes. When I need, you know, when I know that someone in this team is like running because we don't have water anymore, or because we don't have electricity anymore, and the generator, you know, generator, it's like stupidities that makes us lose our time and energy and because of a lot of injustice because it's very often the jungle out there so for all of these things these things make you angry my reaction can be getting angry sometimes well it's hard to strive for this fairness and justice in a country like this well if you're if you want to do it in a place that is perfect you have nothing to do so i just think that this is a country of opportunities i'm complaining of all of these different problems, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. when there is a problem, there's an opportunity to bring solutions. solutions. Kamal, this all looks so yummy. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Have you ever played? Never yes. have I ever. No. Do you know what it is? I ask a question. Okay. And you have to say either I have mm -hmm. or I have never. Okay. And you have to show them. Okay. There you go. I have or I have never. Are you ready? And you have to be as honest as possible. Very easy. All right. We're going to start with an easy one. Mm -hmm. Never have I ever sent a plate back at a restaurant. A plate back? This is never. Yeah. Never. You've never sent a plate back at a never. restaurant? Never. I don't like it. I would not eat it. And that's it. You've never sent it back? I'll not make a fuss about it. Oh no. Oh, my God. <laughs> never have I ever told someone their food was good when it actually was not. Yes. 
you've said their food was good even though it was not. Yes. You can't tell us who. <laughs> well, many times, yes. Because you're because, trying you to know, be nice. If me saying so is going to change something and mm -hmm. this person is going to be a better cook, yes, I will say it, you know. Yeah. And if this person is professional and trying to do a, a job, but if yeah. it's just, you know, a friend who's trying to make out the best and inviting us and everything, like, why should I make a useless uh, comment? We're not here to do comments and criticize. Like, no, no, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you. Often in the restaurants, like, mainly American style. So the best How way was the food? How was this? And yeah. all this? Like, Thank you. I say nothing at all. I just say thank you. Okay. Now, if they see this, they'll know that basically this is what you mean. <laughs> Never have I ever binged out on fast food despite being generally healthy in the last year. Never. Come on. Never. Come but, on. But what is fast food? I adore shawarma. I adore falafel. Even burgers can be extraordinary. We're just talking about, you know, bad quality fast, mm -hmm. cheap fast food. Mm -hmm. This? No, I don't. No, well, you don't. Okay. I adore good, a good burger. It's like yeah. a good meat a good bread and something with it, you know? Okay. So no, I adore fast food and fast food is the food of the street. So it's like an easy and spontaneous expression and this okay. is what I adore about street food. Okay. It's not like soaked and prepared and, you know, it's spontaneous. Never have I ever eaten something cold before heating it because I was so hungry, I just had to have it. No. Never. No. Cold chicken in the morning? Uh, no. <laughs> cold pizza Unle in the morning? Unle yeah, key. Oh. Unless I like yeah, it. Key. Unless, unless I like it cold. Never. Always had to eat, eat the food before. Eat it like I want it to be. If I want it cold, I'll eat it cold. If I want it hot, I'll wait five more minutes and I'll have it hot. Your, your control when it comes to food, even if you're starving. Yes. Always. Well, I'll just grab a piece of bread or something and I'll wait these five minutes. Never have I ever said something dishonest to an interviewer interviewing me. <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> We're sure about that. All right. Well, thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. What a delightful man. And a humanist, which is the one label that Kamal Muzawak doesn't mind. Look at this yummy stuff. In his quest for fairness, he has been one of the very few to bridge the gap between rural and urban, allowing them both to complement one another and living proof that food is the key to all satisfaction and happiness. If you like this episode of Y Chats and want to see more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click, click, click.